Want to share something later? No. I'm just trying to get rid of this page. No. Close tabs. Yeah. And I'm going to use it for me. Get organized. I should have done that. I've got to organize some rough notes which I made. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, I have to accept my own obeisances. Is that Nitai? Radha Charan. Is it? No, it's not. Radha Charan, Hare Krishna. Good to see you. How are you? Um, Krishna's mercy, everything is um, doing okay, Maharaj. Nice. Are... <laughs> nice. How can Vas? Um, he is. Uh, he will join in a, in a while. He's there, I think. Good. What about Mickey? How's Mickey? Um, Mickey I yeah, I recently. Um, got in touch with them, Jerome, Mickey, and um, yeah. through the lockdown, they are in, the, in different places, not in Manila. Yeah, they, they keep in touch. I get letters from them from time to time, believe it or not. Mm. That's good. good. Where are you now? Are you at uh, New Br uh, Braj? Yes, Brajica Village, in one of the villa. Are you in the villa? Mm. Okay. And deities have been put back on the altar or yet not? Um, they're still waiting for the um, international flights. So the that's a year. That's over a year now, isn't it? More than oh, a year. Yes, yes. Long time. Really long time. And where's Maharaj? Is he there? Is Maharaj at Eco Village? Oh. He's gone dead. Krishna Kripa. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, congratulations. Hare Ball. But all of this looks like. Okay. Huh? Just, he froze. You got, yeah, you, you're frozen yourself. Is it cold still. there? It's cold here. It's minus six here. Minus six degrees centigrade. He's also frozen. They all got frozen. Now oh, he's moved again. <laughs> I think Radhatran's got frozen. It's too, the, the coldness here has gone, gone through the uh, internet and he's got completely frozen. Here yeah, we've had, it hasn't gone above freezing point here, even the day for four or five days now. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to warm ourselves up. We'll start with some kirtan. Welcome, everybody, those who are online. Hi, Bob, Vaishnava, Vaishnava Kipa. Hi, Krishna. And welcome to the devotees from the Philippines. Nada. Kipa. Also there, I can't see. Okay, Hare Namananda, and let's see what is Radha Charan. There's books in his hand. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hey, Maharishi Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Wonderful to see you again. My goodness, we were praying for you so long last year. Didn't know. 
I didn't know when I'd see you again. It's so nice to see you online. Hare Krishna. Oh, you're looking, I'm glad to see you looking in good shape. I hope you feel okay. I feel, you know, I'm still not great. You know, my lungs are damaged, but um, yeah. I, I was on this machine for a long time. Yeah, I know. I was, every day I was online with Sutapa practically and, you know, asking about you and the other devotees there. Yeah, Sutapa was oh. coming in quite a lot to the hospital. Tatikshu was me yeah. with me quite a lot. Tatikshu, so, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Oh, thank you, Mark. Well, well, oh. Thanks for being with us. We're very sorry about your dad. Thank God you're with us at least. Okay. Okay, uh, whoever, Radhacharan or Rashik, whoever's facilitating, we'll begin now if that's okay. You ready? Okay. Fire away. You, you're on two screens there, mate. You've got, you got two screens, Radhacharan. In one screen, you're running with a bag, a, a bunch of books in your hand. Can't wait to get out there again. And thank you, Tan. Now, Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta, Vaminiti Namine, Namaho. Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya, Uttale, Srimate Bhakti Vedanta, Vamineti Namaste. Namaste. Sarasate Goravani Prachadine. Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gauravata Vrinda Shri Vishnu Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare, Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna Krishna na Krishna Hare 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 Ram Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Ah Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Jai Radha Madhava, Kundra Bihari. Jai 
Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Om Vishnu Pada Padamahamsa Hari Pratika Charya Stutasata Shlehesa Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Ananta Kota Vaishnava Inda Ki. Jai. Nama Charya Shilhadas Thakur Ki. Jai. Prem Singh Ho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasudhi Gaura Bhakti Vinda Ki. Jai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Gopa Dhan Ki. Jai. Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki. Jai. Shri Mayapur Dham Ki. Jai. Raj Eko Village Ki. Jai. Jai. Shri Shri Dhanatai Gorahari Ki. Jai. Jai. Oh, I'm in Malaysia. <laughs> Nitai Sant Gornataraj Ki. Jai. Chila Prabhupad Ki. Jai. Hari Nam Sankatan Ki. Jai. Jai. Brihat Madanga Ki. Jai. All glorious to the assembled devotees. All glorious to Shri Guru and Grand Gold Glorious to Shri Prabhupad. Hari Vol. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, Good to see you, Radha Charan Prabhu. Radha Charan Prabhu is our host today. He is in Philippines in our beautiful little farm community there, Bush Echo Village. And he is our Sankatan leader, book distributing leader there in the Philippines at the moment. Although maybe not doing as many books as he'd like to. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> And he will be giving the talk today. Is that right, for uh, Radha Shran? Yeah, I was uh, there to introduce the speaker for today, Maharaj. Oh, you're introducing the speaker. <laughs> okay, I was introducing you. Yeah. Hey, one question before you kick off. Um, we're on Zoom. Is uh, Are some of the devotees on some other system or is everyone on Zoom? Maharaj, they're watching on um, Facebook Live. Facebook Live. So there are most of the Filipino devotees, no doubt, are on Facebook Live or dead or alive. Yes, yes. And some also are here in Zoom. Yeah, I see a few on Zoom, but not many. Most of the devotees on Zoom are around the world. We have Maharishi Prabhu, our dear Maharishi Prabhu in London, who's a part and parcel of the Philippines Yatra also. <laughs> Almost. And uh, many other devotees in England and France. And in Malaysia and in Australia, America, Fiji, New Zealand, a few other places um, online. So, uh, Ireland. So, so okay, I uh, will hand over to you. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj, and uh, our dear devotees. First of all, we would like to welcome those who are tuned in in our Zoom and also Facebook Live. For today's class, he has been initiated by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, in 1972. Through the years, Maharaj has been serving in various countries around the world. But for the last few years, he has been really making time to serve East Conference Yatra. For now, during the lockdown, he has been serving is New Mayapur, France, engaging in um, a variety of practical services and providing loving support to the devotees trying to maintain the project. Srila Prabhupada, our Srila Prabhupada, have stayed in New Mayapur three times and installed Shishri Krishna Balaram there. Shishri Krishna Balaram Ki. Yeah. New Mayapur is a farm community and a temple, which is an old French castle. It is the only remaining Eastern property in Europe where Srila Prabhupada stayed. Maharaj has been visiting Philippines for many years now, and he has quite a few disciples here. All devotees look forward to his ecstatic kirtans, harinams, classes, dramas, and spiritual guidance. Maharaj is a strong advocate of distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, and he even distributes many himself. We really hope Maharaj can visit Philippines again very soon, sometimes um, in the future, where, when, when the international situations allows. 
Marej is also the perfect example of a devotee who go extra mile in serving, loving, and caring the devotees. When he is here in the Philippines, I personally witness, he really makes sure that he prioritizes and makes time to reach out to those devotees by personally calling them or even visiting them. This quality of marriage never fails to touch the hearts of all the devotees here in the Philippines and all over the world. So without further ado, let us all welcome His Holiness Jarenanda Goswami Maharaj and chant three loud Haribol. Haribol! 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 Hare Krishna! So thank you very much. Um, to everybody online today, Vanchakal put Rubius Char, Kripa Sindhu Bhabha Char, Panam Pavanabio, Vaishnavabio, Namo Namaha. So um, I'm told that uh, tomorrow is uh, something called, it depends where you're from, how it's pronounced, but Valentine's Day, is that correct? In many countries, uh, this is not a festival which is celebrated. In the Philippines, America and in Europe, some European countries, it is celebrated. Perhaps in Australia also, I don't know. But it is celebrated as a, what would we, could we say, is hardly a religious function, put it like that. It's celebrated mostly for material purposes. As most of the traditional festivals have uh, evolved over the generations, over the centuries, and in many ways, they become quite different from the original purpose of the festival. Whereas in the case of Valentine's Day, the original purpose is a little bit questionable, um, but in general, it's seen as a pagan festival, pagan rather, pagan festival um, for ancient Roman uh, method of trying to uh, for the women to become more fertile. It's quite a grotesque history um, of this event. And when the pagans were converted into so-called Christians and this festival like others, Christmas, another one, which was um, incorporated within the, uh, the Christian church and given it some kind of recognition um, in regards to St. Valentine, um, there were certain saints who were persecuted during the history of Christianity, and there's also the day is sometimes um, accredited to their devotion or their sacrifice or whatever it may be. But whatever it is, it doesn't really have any spiritual significance um, in terms of its history, not really. Um, so people for in the Philippines, I guess, they all send each other cards and Cupid is uh, the worshipable deity, generally speaking, on Valentine Day. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly, people are more or less worshipping Cupid. It's very interesting. If any of you have been to London, some of you are from that part of the world, you will see in the centre of the city in Piccadilly Circus, um, there is one statue the statue of Eros, the Greek god. The Greek god is another name of Cupid, god of so-called love, right in the middle of Piccadilly. And uh, if you know anything about the geography of London, you will know that that is right on the edge of what they call the red light district. The red light district is not a highway in Philippines where everyone's stuck on the highway with their back lights showing. It's, uh, it means um, where what we would call sexually promiscuous activities take place uh, above and beyond the norm. Um, prostitution and all kinds of illicit activities of various kinds are there. Maybe not as prominent as previous decades, but still it has that air about it. Um, and it's funny how that, how, and, and people are circumambulating Cupid all the time. It's right in this sort of square there, people walking around in cars. 
And it's kind of ironic that right in the middle of, of that area, right on the edge of that area that Cupid, the statue of Cupid is there, which is supposed to, Cupid is understood to be the form, um, expansive, partial expansion, um, generally Padumna, one of the Chaturvyuha forms of the Lord is, uh, is actually sometimes also known as Cupid. Um, and the expanded partial expansion of Kamadev and Cupid is the name given to that God of love, the demigod, whose business it is to really, I mean, you could say reciprocate with the living entity's tendency, but to excite, excite us all. And we see on the cards, probably on Valentine's Day, I don't know, but uh, is that the time when they send cards with a heart? You know, the heart and heart with an arrow through it. Is that what they do? Yes. They do. Okay. So we see Cupid Eros also is stood there on the statue, right? Marishis with his bow and arrow, shooting everybody's hearts. Come on, enjoy. Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, to try to excite the sexual appetites of those who have the uh, association of Eros or Cupid there. Um, and this is a traditional kind of way of, um, and of, um, of a Valentine's Day is to try to excite that inner love, as we like, we like to use the word love, but in reality it's, uh, it's another word beginning with L. Um, which is a little different than love, but it's, it's a reflection of love, you could say, perverted, called lust. And Krishna speaks a lot about this lust. But today, we're going to also touch on that, if time allows, later on. But we're going to go to a verse now, because the title of today's presentation is... What is it? What's it called? Uh, not not. I'm motivated, something like that. Service. Do you know what the title is, Radhatram? Marriage, it is selfless love. Pardon? Selfless, okay. Selfless love. Now, from a materialistic point of view, selfless love. Hard to understand what that would mean in a sense, if you take it literally. We know what it means, and people know what it means. It means love without any you know self-intent it's simply for the um benefit of the other party or um parties it's not for one's own um purpose basically speaking um and that selflessness can be can be um used at least in the material world it's used in all kinds of ways it may be selfless service to the nation some people think like that. It could be selfless service to one's community, selfless service to you know, humanity, it could be to one's religion, it could be to one's family, and so on. Um, but that's a relative understanding, of course. The devotional understanding goes beyond relativity and goes to the absolute platform. So we're going to try to go from the relative situation which we're in the one extreme is a very selfish situation where the whole world exists simply for my pleasure. Um, although we may not say that, but that's basically how it is. Pretty much to a certain degree, more or less, everyone in the material universe is to some degree in that category. That I am the enjoyer, everything is meant for our pleasure. Religions sometimes institutionalize it in the form of, well, more or less, the animals are there for our pleasure, for instance. That's one example of that selfish mentality, um, thinking that that's for my pleasure, uh, etc. So it goes from one extreme to the other extreme, and you get all varieties in this material world of people who are just grossly selfish and are only interested in their own well-being and their own enjoyment to those who are thinking all the time about the welfare of other living entities, at least not necessarily all living entities, they don't necessarily care about the ants 
or about the um, insects of uh, various kinds or what to speak of the plants. Some people go a little further towards that direction, but it's also, there are limits. It's not, there are certain limits uh, due to being covered by the modes of nature. Ignorance is always there. Understanding the real nature of, of both help and who to help, etc., will always be covered by ignorance, even though there may be some goodness there motivating one's passion, um, there's also ignorance. So it falls short of the mark of universal, you could say universal selflessness, even materially speaking. Nobody can really act. I mean, you could go up to Lord Brahma, maybe you could say that he's acting for universal welfare. Indra, he also falls from his position quite often. Um, pretty much everybody has a self-centered interest. It's very rare to find selflessness. Now, on the impersonal path, so people become frustrated with trying to fulfill that effort. They may take to impersonalism, and then it becomes selfless. It almost means there is no self, um, and there's no self to serve either. So where's the question of selfless service? There's no self, there's no, self, no, no one to serve. So it becomes a, a, a complete void, basically speaking or kind of homogeneous oneness, as we call the Brahman. So if neither of those states is, gen, gen, is um, genuinely selfless service. There is always, we're in a human body and we see things from a human perspective. And we're in a white, black, blue, green, orange, whatever color body it may be, gender, this thing and that thing, born in a certain religion, born in a certain country, born in a certain whatever condition. Um, and we are naturally, the tendency is to, to a certain extent, to see things from our own perspective. So there's no real selflessness. In another sense, we could say in this material world, there is a kind of a selflessness because we don't know who the self is. So our service is really, um, it's like what we say, um, it's wasted away, wasted, because we don't know who the self is anyway. So the greatest service we understood, which we can do for our fellow mankind is to understand what is the real self. And then service begins. Real service begins. There's no real service to other living entities unless we come to the Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma stage, the spiritual stage. Then real devotional service begins. So we're going to go to a verse now from the Srimad Bhagavatam. If Radhishran or Rasika can put the verse on the screen, please. It's from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter two, text number six. Chapter two of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the, first, this is the beginning of Sutta Goswami's response to the relevant questions of the sages of Naimasharanya. Now, why are they relevant? One of the previous verse, Okay, I don't even remember there. Anyway, um, in the previous verse, Munio Sada Prishtaham Bhavavir Loka Mangalam Yat Krita Krishna Sam Prashnohi and Atma Supersediti Sutta Swami praises the sages of Namasharanya um, saying that your questions, if you go to the translation, please. Translation. There is. Oh, sages, I've been justly, justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. All the questions we ask in this world, be it what they may, are not capable of completely satisfying the self. They may temporarily satisfy the mind, they may temporarily satisfy our senses in various ways or those of others around us. But they do because they're not related, directly related to Lord Krishna. They don't fully satisfy us. And therefore, not only that, but because they're not related to, to Krishna, they're not really of relevance to the world's welfare. Because people don't know what their welfare, unless we know who we are, how can we know what is our welfare? We're totally absorbed, or totally, not totally, but to whatever degree it is absorbed in identifying with this body as the self or the mind. And everyone in the world, in the universe, in fact, to some degree is on that platform of ignorance. So as and until we understand our real nature, 
then there's not a, everything else is not really truly speaking for the welfare of the living entity now there is a process there is a process a god-given process is known as religion dharma dharma in its true sense activities which will help us to from our conditioned state from our ignorant state start to realize who we are not just questions how i'm going to satisfy who i'm not that's called maya almost all of our efforts from political to economic to social to whatever every type of ism you can think of is geared towards trying to satisfy what i'm not now that is if we take it literally that that's a little crazy we're spending our whole lives working hard to satisfy the body and its senses and those of others around us knowing quite well that the ultimate result of this is death and and suffering even in the interim stage between now and then so much suffering so much fear so much anxiety so much distress so why would we do this because of ignorance the living entity is in ignorance ignorance of identity ignorance of the purpose of life ignorance of the spiritual realm ignorance of god ignorance of our relationship with him and the process to awaken that relationship we're covered by varieties of ignorance and we're being kept in ignorance our whole society is geared towards keeping the living entities in ignorance and all that we get in this world is a reflection of the spiritual pleasure the spiritual nature a reflection is there in this world a dim reflection and that manifests in terms of our topic today we have valentine's day tomorrow manifesting in this sense there are many different areas we could discuss but in terms you could say of the sexual propensity which pervertedly speaking in this world puts ourselves in the center instead of krishna so krishna's expansion and the partial expansion of krishna's expansions um as uh, as cupid or kamade um the word kama is, is also very interesting kama some of its roots refer to that being you know completely bewildered or captivated etc etc um by some object and that's the meaning of lust if we look up lust is not just lust for, for sex either it, the traditional the original terminology lust refers to you know any inordinate um um intentional desire for towards something it could be food it could be what toward acquisitions it could be what towards people it could be towards many things um above and beyond what is a necessity necessity and when we see when we look at the um the four normal let's say um um actions of human meant to be actions of human society it starts with dharma dharma arta kama moksha so these two are there dharma and kama are both there they're they're part and parcel you could say of the human society practically speaking so dharma is supposed to be the the guidelines which are to help free us from being controlled by varieties of kama or as krishna says in bhagavad gita which is kama esha koda kama esha koda esha raja guna samudbhava mahashama mam tapma viti enam ira varinam the all devouring sinful enemy of this world it just captures our attention is kama kama esha is lust lust not just for women or men lust for anything thinking lust proper defines lust basically as the desire to satisfy one's senses in any way it's not just people may just think in terms of specifics in terms of women or men or something like that in a sexual sense of so the term over and above you know normal relationships um and uh, but it's not is any any idea any intention to satisfy one's own senses so we're on earth or even not on earth we're anywhere in this material universe is lust not present present everywhere 
Krishna says it's also in our own body, our intelligence, our mind, our senses, lust is sitting there everywhere. It's conquered our mind, intelligence, and senses. We're overwhelmed. Right. So let's go to today's verse then. Um, so these questions that the sages are asking are relevant because they're, they will help us to become free of being controlled by lust. So this is today's verse. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. I can't hear anything. Have you all lost your tongues? <laughs> You're all mute. <laughs> Maybe it's breakfast time. So, Savai Pung Sang Puro Dharmo. Yato Bhaktir Hoksha Jay. Yato Bhaktir Hoksha Jay. Ahoy Taki Apati Hata. Ahoy Taki Apati Hata. Yayatma Suprasidati. Yayatma Suprasidati. Uh, we won't repeat because I won't hear you anyway. Uh, I don't think so. But we're going to the synonyms, please. The famous verse, Prabhupada quotes many times. This verse is the first start, is the start, is the real start. You could say of establishing the goal of human life and the means to attain it. Sa vai, you can see it on the screen, I don't need to repeat it. The vai pung sang para dharma, occupation, Prabhupada says, sublime occupation for mankind. Yataha. Bhakti, Adhokshade, devotional service unto Adhokshaja, Adhokshaja, unto the transcendence. He was beyond the influence of the material world. Ahoytuki, and these two words are the words which are related to today's topic selfless service. For service, bhakti. In many countries, the word bhakti is understood to be service. Um, Ahaitiki, causeless, apatihata, unbroken, and then atma supersedity. Atma means the self, many means, but supersedity can be completely satisfied when our service becomes ahaitiki, apatihata, causeless, unbroken. So Krishna is the cause of all causes, but here it says causeless. So what is the cause? What does that mean? Causeless means no material cause. It's not karma. It's not passion, desiring some result or a recognition or anything like that. It's not good. It's not by chance. It's not by force. It has no material cause. It's the nature of the self. It's the choice of the atma. Uh, by the mercy of another atma, we may unknowingly, Gyata Sakriti, be engaged in devotional service of some kind, you may not know what it is, just by good fortune, not by chance, by good fortune, we get the chance, I <laughs> use the word chance, opportunity, the opportunity to chant, or the opportunity to take prasadam, or the opportunity to render some practical service or something, and connecting us unknowingly, in many cases, agyata means without knowledge, sukriti, good fortune, bhakti and mukha sukriti means, you know, Sukriti, you know, meaning good fortune or good activity, bhakti and mukha, but engaged in activities of devotional service. Um, this is the real um, good fortune. And that may be causeless. Uh, it is causeless in, in that sense. It has no material cause. It's just the, the causeless mercy of the spirit of the devotees or the Lord and the devotees that we get this opportunity. And it's also a pratihata, unbroken. Unlike most of our endeavors, um, they only occupy a certain time frame or a space in our, in our lives. Even religion is a kind of, um, it may be quite prominent, but it only occupies certain aspects of our daily lives. It's not complete, it's not absolute, it's, it's relative still. It's just the nature of religion because it's applied to the relative, it's applied to the you know, the, the state of our body, the state of society, health, and so many things. So, but devotional service is different. I mean, in the beginning stage, it may also be, you know, broken and with you know, various kinds of, we may have various 
motivations, expectations, we may be doing it for returns and so on. But essentially speaking, this devotional service, if you go to the translation, please, the supreme occupation, dharma, not just relative, you know, this is better than that, no, supreme means there's nothing more than this, this is the topmost occupation for all humanity, the word humanity is mentioned here, but it could be all living entities, is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendent Lord. That's the occupation. Now that occupation, which is bhakti in this case, may begin, such devotional service Prabhupada describes it, must be unmotivated, uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. We can run down the purport, please. Um, I'm gonna miss the first paragraph more or less. Okay, stop there. Stop, where are you, where are you going? Um, okay, stop there. I'll start there. The material existence of the living being is a diseased condition of actual life. We don't think like that. And religion, nothing, nothing thinks particularly like that, maybe to some degree. But it's more about trying to improve the state of our material existence rather than understanding that even the mode of goodness is a diseased condition. Even heaven is, is an abnormal state for the soul. Um, and religion is meant to help us, maybe not all immediately, to come from this false understanding of identifying with this material world, even identifying with heaven, etc., cetera, um, to free us from these various identities or, or aspirations and help to bring us to the real one, which is a spiritual one. Now, if we look back, I'm going to summarize a few things in one shot here, I think. If we look back to the, you could say, the real origins, let's go way, we can't really go back, we've forgotten, even if we, maybe we never even knew anyway, but whatever it is we hear, the origin of everything is Krishna. He's a sarvakarna karnam, the origin of everything that exists. And... For his, and again, we can say why, or we can say whatever you like, but that's his choice. Now, if we want to enjoy ourselves, it's uh, when we say ourselves, our, our conditioned self, when we want to enjoy, we generally speaking, we have to have an object with which we reciprocate. It may not be a person, it may be, you know, the forest, the sky, the sea something um maybe even on the subtle platform we're thinking of something on the subtle platform it's also a subtle object it's not that there's nothing else but me we we tend to relate to something else and try to enjoy that object or that thought or whatever person etc that's normal you know especially when it comes to eating um you definitely you have to have even in the mind maybe some pleasure but it's not very satisfying really it's uh, we really have to have it on the on the external or gross platform and we can enjoy the food or if it's a can't avoid it because the soul by nature has this desire to it's an andam way besat this enjoy, desire to enjoy you can't take it away from the existence of the soul so how to enjoy without the presence of anyone else is only because it become one realizes that enjoyment in this world is really frustrating that people take to the impersonal path. But in actual fact, the nature of the soul is the Nandamaya Vyasat, searching for pleasure. And that means we have to have some object with which we reciprocate or some person of some kind, just the way it is. I mean, we can exist without misery in our own right, you could say, on the Brahman platform, but it's not a positive, it's not the positive nature of the soul, it's just a negative one. Positive nature of the soul is love, happiness, relationship, and so on and so forth. Just we're frustrated in this world. So, um, it's Krishna himself alone, you could say he's Atmarama, he's described, self-satisfied. But everything is a part of the self. Everything is a part of the Supreme Self. We're also a part of the Supreme Self. Mami Vangsa Jiva Loke, Jiva Buddha Sanatana. We're all part and parcel of Godhead. Very different. It's not that we're all one in that sense, 
There are many varieties, Prasya Shakti of the Daya Shuyate, that Krishna has unending varieties of spiritual expansions, all for various purposes. He expands in very many ways. So many different types of expansions. A living entity um, is one kind, where the Tashta Shakti, marginal energy of the Lord, we, we, for various purpose, Krishna is expanding his desire to be to experience pleasure. And because we're all part and parcel of Krishna, we all have a minute portion of Krishna's pleasure potency by nature. Very small it may be, but just like a spark of the fire when it's in the fire, it also blazes like fire, even though it's a tiny spark. Outside of the fire, it only a very, very little bit, and then it goes out. So when this part and parcel of the Lord is in connection with the Lord, Krishna expands in these ways to enjoy pleasure. Radharani is the, you could say, is the, uh, the personification of that pleasure potency. And from, from her, the mood of, uh, expands in every living entity in various ways. And all the other expansions, because there's also the, from Balaram, various expansions for various reasons, also to expand um, the pleasure of the Lord by providing various facilities for his pastimes and so on and so forth, as well as the jivas. So the Lord expands because he wants, just like we do, we have children, we have friends, we have so many different things for our pleasure. That's natural. You know, people like to gain more things, get more property, get you know, more, more things in their homes, uh, more money, more, you know, it's natural because that originates in Krishna and where his part and parcel. Um, so it's natural in a sense, but in the spiritual realm, now we don't have time to read so many wonderful sections in Chaitanya Charitamrita describing the nature of the original love, the original karma, it's kama rupa, where that karma, karma meaning one's uh, kind of like a, a burning desire to attain something, irresistible desire, uncontrollable desire, where one's intelligence, mind, everything becomes completely overwhelmed with that infatuation to obtain something, which we call kama or lust. But in the spiritual world, in its original state, it exists there. And Krishna's expansions, expansions, including the jiva, exist only to see increase the pleasure of Krishna. And Krishna expands as Radharani, his heart, basically the compassionate aspect of the soft aspect of the Supreme Lord manifests as Shumati Radharani. So everything else and everybody else, their pleasure, as Radharani's pleasure is to see Krishna please, everyone else's pleasure is to see Radha and Krishna happy together. Or if one's in another mood, it may be, Krishna is coward, boy is happy or something, but it's to see Krishna and his expansions happy. This is the idea, not the idea, this is the spiritual fact that everything exists for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. And the living entities have this choice, Jiva Tattva does. We have the Shakti Tattvas, the eternal associates of the Lord. There's not a question of thinking how to please Krishna, their very existence is a manifestation of bringing pleasure to Krishna. It's not like with their mind and intelligence, so to speak. Everything is simply pleasing to Krishna, everything about them. There's no question of anything else ever entering into their existence, save and accept what brings pleasure to Krishna. It's, it's not even just spontaneous, it's just absolutely, there's nothing else existing there. They're on that level of complete devotion. To Krishna. So by following in their footsteps, taking guidance from them, the jivas can also cultivate, develop a similar mood of bringing pleasure to Radha and Krishna. And just like Radharani brings the most pleasure to Krishna, we hear this over and over again. So the devotees, what do they want? They, they want to always arrange somehow or another for Radharani to be with Krishna because that brings most pleasure to Krishna. Not themselves. This is selflessness. They're not even thinking of their own, you know, what about me? Now, this is where the problem starts when we think about what, what about me? 
it's possible. This is what brings us into the material world and keeps us into the material world. Even in our present state, this is often a comment which is made, well, what about me? What am I getting out of this? No one cares about me. <laughs> this is the reason we're in the material world, <laughs> this type of mentality. And devotional service, even in the practicing stage, is to step by step, may not happen overnight, step by step, uh, get free of this idea of seeing me in the center. It's a big subject matter and we can't cover it all in a little space of time. And there are many different aspects and angles there about, you know, looking after your body and this, that, and the other. As in, when we see that as Krishna's energy, that's another thing. But when we see it as me in the center, then we remain in this material world as long as we see ourselves in the center. So as soon as we start thinking, what about me in the spiritual realm, you could say, and immediately, you know, we don't really belong there anymore because that's not the mood of the servants of the Lord. They're only thinking, oh, what about Krishna's pleasure? Just like when Uddhava, when Uddhava was sent by, um, no, 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 sent by the Lord to test out the various devotees in this world, just to see the extent of their devotion, huh? And he went to the residence of Dwarka and the residence of Mathura, and here and there, different worshippers of the Lord. And uh, Krishna told him to say, look, when you meet them, just say that, I know, Krishna said, I've got a headache. You just tell them, please. I've got a headache and the cure for that headache is the dust from their feet. Please tell them, I want the dust from my devotee's feet. Then what will I do with it? I'll place it on my head. So, constantly, you can someone to pop in there. Narada Muni, I think it was Narada. Anyway, whoever it was, he uh, he went here and there, and every 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 went every went. Our Lord has got a headache. Oh no! Oh what? What? This is terrible news. Uh, what? What to do? Narada said. Well, the Lord has said, simply give the dust from your feet, and He will place it on His head. Oh no, how could, that's, not, that's not possible. I'm so sinful, I'm so fallen. The dust of my feet, this is a great sin. I'll be punished like anything for this. You know, I can't do that. You know, put the dust of my feet on Krishna's head, no way. From this kind, you can understand that, quite natural. But then he eventually came to the gopis and he told them what was happening with Krishna. And the gopis, practically before he'd finished speaking, were scraping the dust off their feet. Go quickly, quickly, quickly. He thought, these are silly little coward girls. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they They don't know anything about Dharma. So they said, he said, don't you know, young ladies, that if the dust, the dust of your feet goes on the head of Krishna, you might go to hell. And they said, what do we care? whether we go to hell or anywhere we don't care about that all we care about is krishna and if this helps to relieve him of his headache then we are completely satisfied so we could understand what selfless service meant there's no consideration of one's own ahoy to key well what about me what's going to happen to me and so on and so forth where do i enjoy where's my part etc etc it doesn't exist on pure platform of pure devotion in almost to a little teeny weeny extent we can understand in the material world maybe a mother with her child is a uh, you know form not exactly selfless is there certainly is an attachment to your child and there's um, a sentiment and so many things but to some degree the mother will sacrifice her own health her own life practically for the sake of the child. So this is about the closest probably you could get to it by a material example, but it, it, it's absolute, it, it's not relative. It's not interfered with by time, it's a prahita, a patiata. It's completely unending, no matter what the circumstances, like Lord Chaitanya says, huh? you can crush me in your embrace or might be broken hearted by never being present before me. You can do whatever you like. You're always my worshipful Lord unconditionally. This is love. 
Whatever you do, I love you. Sometimes to a certain extent that happens in this world, but then time comes along and brings it to an end. But there is no time in the spiritual world. It's eternal. It's an eternal relationship. And that sounds sheerly boring. Same person, same relationship, but it's not. It is every moment fresh, ever fresh. No end of varieties. And even if there is a repetition, it appears as if this is the first time we ever did it. You remember when you were kids? Some of you may be still kids, I don't know. But when we were kids, you play, and sometimes it's the same thing every day, but it's like, it's just like so much fun. You almost forget you ever did it before. Jumping and fighting and this and that. It's like, it's such sort of relatively speaking fun, but time takes it away, of course, after a while. It's a, a little comparison. In the spiritual world, there is no time influence. It's eternally present and eternal pleasure is there. So that's why Sutta Goswami says only topics of this sort can completely satisfy the self because these topics awaken within this, the jiva's consciousness uh, this remembrance or this understanding of our actual identity, our relationship with Krishna is a reservoir of pleasure. In the material world, there's only a reflection of pleasure. It's just pleasure and pain, a duality, the word of duality in this, that we are presently under the influence of identifying with and trying to achieve our eternal anandamaya bisat, our eternal nature to always be happy, trying to find that in the material world. And it's just downright frustrating because you cannot find it in the material world. It just doesn't exist. Only reflection exists in this material world. According to the modes of nature, we'll get different types of happiness and distress. And what we call love or lust is also that manifests through the various modes of nature. And people who are more influenced by goodness will so-called love more on a, a philanthropic or altruistic platform of society or maybe animals or love the trees or love nature or something a little bit like that. And those in passion, they're just, they love those who fulfill their desires, you know, those in total ignorance only love themselves and don't care a damn about anyone else. Um, <laughs> they don't care less. But spiritually, the love of, on the spiritual platform is for Krishna. It's for Krishna. And because everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. So therefore, one who knows that wants to engage all the parts and parcels in relationship to Krishna to bring him more pleasure, to give him more pleasure. Krishna's already got unlimited, you could say, but the devotee wants to increase the pleasure of his beloved. And when that fixed, actually love, real love is, 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 is defined, real love is when all, at least spiritually speaking, when, no, when one's love is completely reposed in Krishna. And no one else, of course, those who are reminding us of Krishna are inseparable, you could say. But ultimately, it's just for Krishna. No one else. Completely, what satisfies Krishna? And what satisfies Krishna means we also have to, you could say, um, love Krishna's representative, love the man who loved the dog. You have to love the dog, and you know, both have to be there. Um, not that we're saying a dog, but the principle, the example is there because that's how you please Krishna, by loving his devotees. We please Krishna now in this world. We please Krishna by performing various acts of sadhana. Regulated principles, chanting Hare Krishna, getting up in the morning. This is the process to come to the normal or the eternal state of Kama Rupa. Loving Krishna, loving the form of Krishna, and not loving the reflective forms of this world. When one comes to that state, then one also sees that this world is also part of Krishna, is also to be used for Krishna's pleasure, not mine or yours. This is the process of the Dharma, in its real sense, is for that purpose. In the material world, Dharma is not so much for that purpose. People's understanding of Dharma is various religious processes to uh, facilitate, accommodate, and improve my material situation. But that's not real Dharma. That's Namitika Dharma. That's temporary. 
It may be useful if it's actually connected to the Sanatam Dharma, the eternal. Otherwise, it's useless, useless waste of time, simply entangling us in this world, cheating. We described it in earlier verses here in this particular cha in the first chapter there. Dharma Kutava Pojitutra. This Bhagavatam rejects all these cheating religions because they just keep us. They keep us in the material world of relativity. Most they give us liberation. They do not connect us in of themselves with loving devotional service to Krishna, which is the only really selfless stage of devotion or of love, selfless love. Because its only intention is to bring more pleasure to see that Radha and Krishna are enjoying with each other. Selflessness. We see ourselves as just instruments to bring them pleasure. And Radha and Krishna see themselves as instruments to bring us pleasure. So it's reciprocal. But that the mood of the devotee is not like that. If I do this, then Krishna will please me. No. Doesn't think like that. MP thinks, whatever it is, as long as Radha and Krishna are happy, that's all. And, and on this plane, it's like Prabhupada said, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he quotes him. And he said that the, the, the very important um, statement, which Prabhupada said he based his movement on this, is that Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur said that the order, the instruction of my spiritual master is all that matters to me. Whether I go to heaven or hell, it doesn't matter. I don't care. My spiritual master's order is my sadhya, my goal. My sadhana, my practice, everything to me, it means everything. So this is the practice stage to awaken that eternal, natural nature of the soul, which presently is covered over due to our animosity or enviousness towards Krishna and his associates. That can be changed by the practical application of pure devotional service, following in the footsteps of those who are not envious or rather than Krishna the pure devotees of the Lord. The scriptures are the, the, the written direction, the sadhus are the practical example, and the guru is the one who basically takes us, opposed to and the principle of guru, takes us out of this material world and introduces us in the spiritual realm, which we really, what's what we're really looking for. Are we really looking for death? Are we really looking for Frustration, anxiety, suffering, this thing, that thing. Not really. But it comes because we're in an artificial, abnormal, asset, temporary condition. So this Bhagavatam is to help us, specifically the Shuman Bhagavatam, because it is transcendental literature. It is not of this mundane plane. It is literature which is on the spiritual platform. So this Shuman Bhagavatam is therefore Amala. It is um, a, a deathless, eternal scripture. So let's read that purple a little bit there, please, Radha Charan. We haven't finished the purple yet. Go back to the verse, please. Can you get it? Can you get the verse, purple? No? I can't. Is it there? I can't see it. I don't see it. There it is. Got it. Okay. Actual life is spiritual existence, Brahma Bhuta, where life is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Material existence is temporary, illusory, and full of misery. There is no happiness at all. What is the happiness? There is just a futile attempt to get rid of the misery, and temporary cessation of, of misery is falsely called happiness. It's relative. You know, we all experience that. You know, it's damn cold, like today. Here in, in Malay, in uh, France, I don't know what now it is, but it was really cold last night. And happiness was to get wrapped up in blankets and, and different things to keep warm. And you thought, oh, I feel so good now. But it's not real happiness. It's just you don't feel cold anymore. And that's material life. You know, frustration. Now my frustration satisfied. Hunger. Now it's satisfied. Sleep. Now it's satisfied. Tired. Poverty, now I got money. I'm hope now I'm happy. Oh, I need a girl. Oh, now I got one. Now I'm happy. But it's it's born out of lack, out of out of loss or lack or suffering like that, you know. And when that suffering's removed, then you feel what a relief. You feel so good now. But it, it's not it's not the real the real happiness of the soul. It's just the 
the relief of the condition that we're in, in the material world. If the path of progressive material enjoyment, which is temporary, miserable, and illusory, is inferior. But devotional service to the Lord, which leads one to eternal, blissful, and all cognizant life, is called a superior quality of occupation. Devotional service. Even now we're trying to practice very sadhana bhakti, rules, regulations. Why these rules and regulations are there? You know, we don't like it, maybe. But they're there to free us from the reflection of lust, free us from false ego. False ego is this ide false identity to free us from this. So we can begin to really identify, controlling our senses, focusing and directing our senses. Devotional service means to engage our mind, our senses, our words, intelligence in relationship with Krishna. And so it's a process. Two things are going on. One, by various don'ts, um, to release us from the tendency to become captivated by Cupid and the various other attractive features of this world. And two, the do's, to try to uh, focus on Krishna. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> to release us from focusing on the material and to help us to focus on Krishna. And that helps to lead us to the eternal, blissful, and all cognizant life. It's called superior quality of occupation, Toro Dharma. This is sometimes polluted when mixed with the inferior quality, which is what's happening right now. We're all different stages of mixed devotional service. But as you know, the real devotional service is that service which is um, there's no other desire karma, karma jnana, not for karma not for material returns not for liberation not for any other thing whatsoever there's no other desire it's, it's uh, um, it's service which is anukulena means favorable pleasing anukulena krishna anu anu means to follow following in the footsteps or permanent activity. And of Krishna, for his pleasure, shilam, cultivation, cultivation of devotional service, free from the influence of karma, free from the influence of jnana in the sense of their not being connected to Krishna, the separate objective goals, completely free of anything else, only desire how to please Krishna. That's devotional service. In our practical, we don't know maybe what pleases Krishna. So we learn, we hear what pleases Krishna. Ah, I don't want to do that. I don't like doing that. It's too much. So many things. But this is why we're in the material world. And we continue in the material world. And we're not going to change overnight, maybe. We can, but it's rare. But by gradual practice, step by step, gradually practicing regulated devotional service, gradually that, um, let's say, that passion, becomes transformed or connected with Krishna. Our activities, our desires, everything starts to become more and more connected with Krishna. For example, adoption of devotional service for material gain is certainly an obstruction to the progressive path of renunciation. Renunciation or abnegation for ultimate good is certainly, is certainly a better occupation than enjoyment in the diseased condition of life. Still, abnegation and so on and so forth is not really our business either. That's another another stage. Uh, it's nirviti, praviti stages are there, but the ultimate stage of the devotee is he doesn't um, he doesn't reject anything. Nibbana Krishna Sambhadi Yukta Varagamitate doesn't reject anything because everything belongs to Krishna. He sees how everything can be connected to Krishna. Anyway, either one, Ragadvesha, we won't die to whatever it is, Vishyanchuran. We're even becoming freed from even the um, acceptance and rejection of this world. Because one comes to the fixed platform of being connected with Krishna and seeing everything in its relationship with Krishna and using it for Krishna. Uh, such enjoyment only aggravates the symptoms of disease and increases its duration. That's if we're trying to enjoy the material objects. It's like probably his example, if you pour paraffin or ghee onto a fire, it may go out for a little while, but that's very dangerous because the paraffin will soon ignite 
and the fire of lust will burn even more, burning in the hearts, as Krishna explains in, in, the, in the Bhagavad Gita, it burns like fire. One should therefore accept the superior quality of occupation in the form of the devotional service of the Lord without any tinge, without any tinge of unnecessary desire, fruitive action and philosophical speculation. This alone can lead one to perpetual solace in his service, complete satisfaction. It's funny when you get, when you not just because you don't get anything, when you have no more desire to gain anything in one's service in terms of, you know, some kind of recognition or some kind of res, uh, enjoying a result or getting some kind of position or whatever it is, no more at all, just satisfied with the privilege of rendering service free of any other condition whatsoever, then there's actual happiness begins to naturally awaken without even asking. We have purposely denoted Dharma as occupation because the root meaning of the word Dharma is that which sustains one's existence. A living being's sustenance of existence is to coordinate his activities with his eternal relation with the Supreme Lord. Even in this world, we don't know it, but our existence is because we are in coordinating our activities with the external energy, which is also Krishna's energy. And uh, by Krishna's arrangement in various ways, we are therefore sustained through food, through air, through water, through so many various material elements. Ah, Supreme Lord Krishna is the central pivot of living beings. You know, it's like if we're not connected to the central pivot, we spin out somewhere. So we are simply connecting to Krishna in the center, then everything spins nicely. And he is the all attractive living entity and how attractive it is when everything is coordinated, everything is harmonious. He's the all attractive living entity or eternal form amongst all other living beings. We see in this world when something is attractive to us, then lust may come in. We want it or them, a beautiful girl, a handsome man, a lot of money, gold, or something, a new car. Everyone's different. We have our different objects of uh, attraction. And we become lusty. I need it. I want it. I've got to get it. I'll work for it somehow or another. We want it. So when this awakening and we've forgotten, we're not familiar with Krishna, when we actually understand who is Krishna, when we hear about him from Bhagavatam, when we hear about him from the Shastras and the spiritual, those who have, who know him, when we hear about him, our attraction, they start to develop. We see many examples of this, becoming attracted to the all attractive form of Krishna. This is the direction of karma. Krishna is Madan Mohan. He's the attractor of Cupid, but Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini, the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. Cupid has no, it cannot influence those who are on the pure devotional platform. They're not influenced by lust of this world because they're attached to Madan Mohan, the controller of lust. So we start with Madan Mohan, practical devotional service. Even that will protect us from becoming victimized by Cupid or by karma. Yes. We have to, sometimes we see signs, I love Vrindavan. I left my heart in Vrindavan. <laughs> I don't know how much truth there is in this. It's a nice idea. Um, but it's not just a sentiment, it's a reality. Because Vrindavan is Krishna's home. It's his, his abode. It's his pleasure, pleasure abode. <laughs> So yes, we would love to make that more pleasing to Krishna. Krishna is a complete whole and everything else is his part and parcel. The relation is one of the servant and the served. Our business is serving, not to be served, to serve. Just like our body, all the parts of the body, they're all important, the finger, the toe, the ear, the nose, every part has its part to play. And we take seriously any part of the body when it becomes dysfunctional. It's very important, every part. And the, I, 
Their pleasures when they're all engaged nicely in a healthy condition, serving the whole body, then we're happy. The relation of servant and the served is the most congenial form of intimacy. And then on the transcendental platform that may develop or evolve in so many different relationships, but the basic foundation of our eternal nature is that we are Krishna's servants eternally, servants of servants. One can realize it as devotional service progresses. Everyone should engage himself in that transcendental loving service of the Lord, even in the present conditional state of material existence. That will gradually give one the clue to actual life and please him to complete satisfaction. End of purport by Srila Prabhupada, what a beautiful purport um very very wonderful so what is that time now Ten thirty-eight. okay so maybe i will read something if nothing else comes up i've got lots to read um with you uh, but otherwise we'll ask for some questions if anyone would like to ask some questions unmotivated uninterrupted questions which are for the welfare of the whole world only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. So some questions which can satisfy the self. What is the means? So some questions. Let's see. I don't know if there are any. I've got something on chat. Yes, here's one. Here's one question. Um, and maybe on Facebook, Roger Tram will get some. In regards to love, how do you understand Mother Yasoda falling unconscious when Maharaj Nanda is taken by the servants of Varuna? And two, in regards to love during Vedic times, how do we understand? Chase wife entering the funeral fire of the husband. My goodness. These are very specific questions of relationship. Huh? Relationship. Well, how can Nanda, how can Mother Yasoda serve Krishna without Nanda? His partner is, is related to the second one in terms of even this world. Because the nature of the soul is like trying to exist without the Supreme Lord. Huh? How can the living entity exist without God? Sometimes mundane people think that if we kill their God, then they will no longer exist or something. It would be true, but no one can kill God. Um, so Nanda, we're all Prakriti, we're all meant to bring pleasure to the Purush, the Supreme Personality of God. And without the Purush, there's no mean to existence anymore. Um, so in one sense, we can look at it in another angle too. I mean, um, Nanda, Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, not only is she, she she's completely, I could say, dedicated in that sense, in relation with Krishna and as a wife to Nanda Maharaj, serving, but how Krishna's pleasure will be disturbed. If Nanda Maharaj is not here, then, oh no, what will happen to my Krishna? What will happen? You know, it's, it's like unbearable thought. We may have that in our own existence. What happened if that devotee is not here? It's terrible. You know, of course, Krishna range, we could say, he doesn't really need, but that's the mood of, of the devotee. They, they, they see that, you know, not just because I am no longer protected, but what about Krishna? Oh no, Nanda Maharaj is gone. What will happen to my son? And so on and so forth. It'd be this terrifying thought, not because of our own, oh no, no, who's going to look after me now? Oh, who's going to protect me? No, Krishna. Krishna, Nanda Maharaj is the father. Who will protect my son? So many demons are coming. So many disturbances are there. Oh no, what will happen next? If now they, if Nanda Maharaj is not there, simple one. As far as the wife entering into the fire, Vedic system is all part of, the, you could say, Vaidhi, Vaidhi, not exactly Vaidhi Bhakti, but it's part of Dharma. That the, the wife is chased to her. Now, this is referring, of course, traditionally speaking, this would be referring to a husband who's following the Varnashram system together. 
following the Varnashram system. Now it's not going on nowadays for various reasons. Um, people, are, people are not following the Varnashram system. They're following some mixed or mundane system. So this doesn't apply in this situation the same way. But, uh, you know, it's, it's understood the wife progresses. She serves her husband. Just like if we serve a spiritual master, we serve somebody. And we also get the gain. We get the benefit of their service to some degree. So the wife gets the benefit of her husband's service. Understood the husband's going on. The wife has dedicated herself servant of her husband. And uh, she doesn't have, she's chased. She doesn't have any other inclination. Who else is she? Could be exploited in the absence of her husband. If there are young children, she has to stay and look after them, etc. But in principle, when this happens, is actually elevating. People have be, why people don't like it is because they have zero understanding of the soul, absolutely zero, and a completely false understanding of the purpose of human life. They think it's all material. So therefore, these type of things are abominable in the eyes of people. And therefore, they go ahead and do things like abortion which is the most sinful thing in the universe, practically speaking. And they accept it as normal. And they vote on it. And they vote so fools becomes the law of the land. It's so unfortunate. And because we're actually causing unending suffering for each other. The whole Vedic system is to reduce, not just to reduce the suffering, but to bring it to a complete end. Not just to, you know, pamper the the illusory ideas of, of the living entities in this universe. If we make a rule, now we're going to be happy. How long would their happiness last? A few moments, if at most, maybe not even that. So it's not unfortunate we have this misunderstanding of the soul. It is just simply due to a lack of understanding of the nature of the self. Of identifying with the body and anything, now they're trying to do away with the death penalty. So many crazies. So many crazy things. But what to do, this is Kali Yuga. In the age of Kali, these things are going on. Everything's topsy-turvy, as Prabhupada says. But all these different rules and the manu, laws of manu and so on, they're externals, but they're there to help protect the living entity from repeated birth and death. To help us to gradually become free of this attachments and this being controlled by lust in this material world. It's all lust, simply lust. Attachment to the body, attachment to the family, attachment to the country. It's all different degrees of lust. And all these various things, whether it's the sati rites or whatever, when done properly in the Vedic society, are actually beneficial to help release the soul and help us to realize we're not this body, not to be so attached, free of, that, of the false attachment. You could say the wife is very attached to her husband, but that's a legitimate attachment. If the husband is progressive, if he's actually Aryan or on the human platform, then they're progressing. They're on the progression and she goes along with it uh, without any further karma in this lifetime. That's a very favorable thing. Let's see what we got here. Who's next? Some questions, please. How do we love selflessly devotees who are hard to love? I am that. I am that hard to love, aspiring. You're, you're that hard. I don't know. I've never seen that. But anyway, I'm not there. I'm not in Brajeko village long enough to find out what really goes on down there. Um, but, well, what do we mean by a hard devotee? It's uh, if we're hard, we'll see others hard. It's a, it's a matter of our own hearts. So, the real thing is our own hearts. It's not just a mechanical application. It's a question of the heart. Our own heart becomes softened. And as the heart becomes purified and softened by chanting and hearing the sweet sound of the holy name and performing or acting in various ways of devotional service, and gradually the heart's supposed to come soft. It's one of the effects of devotional service. That doesn't mean weak, it means compassionate. The heart starts to feel compassion towards other living entities. So for one who's actually maturing in devotional service, naturally, even if the other person's heart, we would take no um, offense. Now, the beginning maybe is that that may be one of the earlier consequences of the softening of heart. You don't get upset, you don't take offense, you don't feel like getting your own back. You don't get angry, you don't blame the other person. 
These may be preliminary effects of softening of the heart. They're not matured, but they're beginning to mature. And we may start feeling like that. Don't get angry when somebody, you know, on our case or whatever it may be. It may be preliminary signs. And if we do get angry, and if, or if we do reject, or if we do feel, you know, something bad, whatever it may be, um, even though we, we try to reciprocate with them, and oh, no, go away. And like, why do you say that to me? You know, we, <laughs> I'm trying to serve, and you, you know, we get a little upset sometimes, or whatever it is, or we just, okay, I'm never going to talk to them again. Enough of that. And so in the preliminary stage, those things may be there. The next stage is, that may not be the case. We may think, oh, wait, what have I done? I, I hurt them somehow. I was just like Prabhupada in, in Montreal when that man started getting on his case in the lecture, one Indian man. Probably did nothing. He just he said after the lecture, he said, I must have hurt him in my previous life. That's all. So he gave us a little clue, you know, that it's not by chance that somebody appears to us hard. Or we, 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 we were hard. We're seeing it like that. So the main thing is to concentrate on softening our own hearts. And part of that process is our, obviously the way we behave with others, the way we treat you know, other living entities, as we treat ourselves, etc. You know, kind of being sometimes we're hard on ourselves. That's a kind of an interesting one. Uh, how we can understand being hard on our own self, or we may be undergoing, for instance, trying to imitate undergoing various practices beyond our eligibility we may be covering over our actual nature um, presenting ourselves as something we're not etc etc um, this is kind of being hard on oneself you could say and then naturally it's going to affect our relationships with others it's unavoidable unavoidable so let's try to soften our hearts by hearing a maha mantra carefully carefully hearing the sound that will break down all the contamination in our heart and flush it out, clean it out by chanting the holy name carefully. And Kinvadavada Nudinam Rupa Goswami describes it regularly and carefully chanting the holy name cleans out all these dirty things or softens the hard-hearted heart. And then gradually the natural understanding of other living entities and the compassion towards other living entities will naturally develop. But the process of devotional service is nice because even though we may not be on that level of consciousness, that even, even if we're not on that level, still we're practicing an activity which helps that level, that level of consciousness to develop, like preaching, for instance, Sankirtan, going out and chanting the holy names in public, distributing prasadam, distributing books, talking, reading amongst each other, amongst people, whatever it is, Krishna, Kata, engaging in certain acts of service. All these things can help to soften our hearts. It may take some time. Krishna's mercy, this will take place, that our hearts will become softened, especially the preaching, giving it to others, is the most magnanimous, compassionate activity giving Krishna consciousness to other living entities. This will help soften our hard hearts and pray that we not become overwhelmed with pride. Lord Brahma, Priyavata, they pray, please, my Lord, protect me that I not become overwhelmed with pride, which will cause the heart to become very hard. And false acting beyond one's eligibility can also harden the heart. False austerities beyond reality and then missing the real purpose of devotional service. It's not to perform external austerities. It's to soften the heart and develop uh, unalloyed or, or pure love for the instruction of my spiritual master and uh, chanting and hearing and so on. Positive things. Who's next? Hare Krishna. We encourage that if anybody have any questions, please type it here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> or you can say maybe on Facebook. I don't know if that is Facebook. I don't know what it is. Here's something. We heard about the gopis' unmatched love and devotion to Krishna. 
in our present condition of state, can this be a role model for us? It's something to aim towards, you could say, and which we can see in uh, maybe in other devotees developing. We may not see it developing in ourselves, we're too fallen, but we can appreciate it in other Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, how this mood of, of selflessness, how they're working tirelessly to preach Krishna consciousness or facilitate the spreading of Krishna consciousness day and night, um, working their whole being and trying to you know, render service. This is uh, even in the sadhana stage, one can appreciate this. So Raganuga, Ragatmika, Raganuga spontaneous devotional service. Prabhupada would even use this term in uh, applied it sometimes to Vaiti Sadhana Bhakti or the practicing stage of devotion. He would sometimes say, This is what's right, this is spontaneous because devotees are attracted. We're becoming attracted to the deity, attracted to chanting, attracted to Mongol Arti. Whatever it is, something we're becoming attracted to. So as karma is, in its sense, is you know, it's attraction. It means attraction. In its, its spiritual realm, it's the attraction, unflinching attraction to Krishna. In the material world, it is attraction towards some of the reflections of the spiritual world, the material world. So when we're becoming attracted to chanting and hearing, and when we're becoming attracted to the deities or service to the devotees or preaching or whatever, aspect of service it may be it's and then that attraction you can say drives us it's not just you have to do it you want to do it you've got a burning desire i want to do it i want to do it and you, don't, you may not even be thinking about that you just can't imagine living without doing it it's getting closer and you can appreciate that in devotees so when you see devotees because it may be other factors but in principle it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a stage, a preliminary stage of this mood. And we can appreciate that in, in the other devotees. And we may not ourselves feel we have any attraction whatsoever. And just somehow or another, we're still here by good fortune. But we can at least see that in other devotees. I want to speak of the advanced devotees. And of course, we can hear about it too from various memories or from Shastras and so on and so forth. The unalloyed deep unmotivated devotion, devotees. We have many examples in our lives today of such wonderful devotees. In, in, you know, even in Iskand, there are so many wonderful examples of devotees who selflessly, uh, without any motivation, material motivation, or without any interruption, engage in devotional service. It's very inspiring um, to and to think on that, to, to note that. So, and, and we would hope that in our own devotional service would be coming a little spontaneous. Why? Because my spiritual master wants, why are you going on book distribution? How much do they pay you, Radhishram, when you go on books? How much do you get paid? What's your percentage? Pay me with uh, another... With, uh, another... Illicit huh? Illicit book. Pardon? The payment is uh, another service to distribute book. You have to do more. That's, that's pretty, that's cruel, isn't it? You go out there, no pay, and they say, do more, do more. Here's more books, go out and do more. But nobody can understand that the pleasure of distributing books is just beyond the imagination, is beyond the pleasure of anything in this world. When you see somebody taking Krishna in their hands, it's just amazing. And then, you know, it's such an amazing experience. It's so pleasing to the self. Great service done. And uh, yeah, the re reward is more service. <laughs> the reward is more. Prabhupada said that. What's the result of chanting? Prabhupada said more chanting. <laughs> Not less, more. <laughs> you want to chant more and more and more. So like that, you know, it's, it's uh, very, we can get a little tiny glimpse of this mood, in, in, especially in Sankirtan, a little glimpse sometimes of this mood of, doing things in the rain and the wind and the snow and the cold and the hot and people don't like it you know whatever the situation the devotee carries on because he's doing it for the pleasure of krishna not for himself for the pleasure of krishna he'll just try to preach this message of bhagavad-gita uh, even if i'm not it's not pleasing my mundane senses but i'm acting for krishna's pleasure this is my role i'm his servant not my business to start 
complaining about the vehicle or whatever it is. That's the vehicle my master has given me and I use it in his service. Uh -huh. That's a question. It says that our goal is to have love for Krishna. My question is how to know if this love manifested already in the heart. <laughs> has it manifested in the heart? Well, um, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadhu Kabanai Shravanadi Shuddha Chite Kari Udai. The natural we have love for Krishna in our hearts. It's an eternal, eternal nature of the soul. Um, it's not something that is awoken by an external adjustment. It's Shravananadi is awoken when we have, by through hearing and chanting about Krishna, chanting the holy names, hearing Bhagavatam, and to support that all kinds of services are there to uh, you know, avoid engaging our mind and senses in nonsense. So we keep fully engaged. So when we hear and chant about Krishna, there's not so much disturbance in our hearts. Um, so how to know um, if this is, if it is manifesting, we would hope to say is man hasn't manifested exactly. Or we could say 1% is also manifested, but it's on the process of manifesting. Um, because it's not, it's not with pure love, it's mixed. It's mixed. It's not completely pure. <laughs> There are stages of devotional service, mixed devotional service, um, karma, mishra, bhakti, jnana, mishra, bhakti, and so on. Different types of mixed devotional services, um, which basically that's the stage most of us are at. It's not completely unalloyed, unmotivated, uninterrupted, and so on. It's usually mixed. So uh, when we associate with the unmixed, then gradually it can become also unmixed. And we associate by, by trying to apply the spiritual master's instructions in our life more and more and trying to hear more and more about Krishna. So what it means is the desire for that is manifesting. The desire and the desire for loving Krishna is manifesting in our hearts. And its manifestation is, or the manifestation of that desire is shown by our actions. That, you know, as we discussed just now, that we're trying to do the services which are relevant to our progress in spiritual life, getting up early in the morning, chanting japa, attending mongolarity, hearing Bhagavatam, all the various limbs of devotional service are there. And the more we apply these various processes of devotional service, <coughs> the more chance there is that this natural love of God, which is in our heart, will start to manifest more and more and more until it becomes total, complete, full, unalloyed, unmotivated, uninterrupted. But right now it's not completely unmotivated and it's not completely uninterrupted. There's still, you know, various conditions involved. And, you know, if something upsets me, then I'm not going to do it. Um, and so on and so forth. Tend to be there quite often. Um, so we're not quite on that level, but there's the process. It's, it's a gradual involvement. So it's manifesting. So you see that, you can judge that by the symptoms, you know, becoming more and more, uh, but we've already discussed some of them less affected or less controlled by circumstances, more controlled by the order of the spiritual master. We're becoming attracted to various aspects of devotional service. We want to serve the devotees. We, like, we become happy when we see other devotees progressing in spiritual life, doing nice service. We become happy. Um, um, when that material desires may be there in the mind, but we're not so attracted to them. We're more attracted to hearing and chanting. Um, we want to go out and preach the message of Krishna consciousness. We're eager, eager to hear the instructions of the spiritual master. Um, we're eager to serve. I mean, there's just so many variety of symptoms may be there that the manifestation is beginning to take place. But you can't expect it immediately. This takes a little time to, to grow, to cleanse out the heart and to water the seed of pure devotional service so that it grows nicely without anartas and gradually enters into the spiritual kingdom and takes shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. Next one.
Hare Krishna. Anything else, Radha Shanji? Um, all is clear, Guru uh, Maharaj. In Facebook, they didn't ask any question. Pardon? Um, there's no questions in Facebook Live. Facebook's gone dead. Hmm. No one's alive. <laughs> They're alive and watching and uh, listening. <laughs> no question. <laughs> oh, I wish I could be there with all of you. It's uh, we're missing, as you said in the beginning, we're also missing the devotees in Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, maybe this year we don't know what this year will bring. We don't know. We're depending on Krishna and see what happens. And otherwise, we wish you all the very best. We're going to have a kirtan to finish now. Uh, we're going on Hari Nam, Shankatown on the streets today in the local town. We're leaving in one hour. So we have to get ready as well. Yes. We're, luckily in France, Hari Bama Rishipo, in France there is not really a lockdown as such. We have what they call a curfew at six o'clock in the evening. We have to. Um, be in, be in our homes. We can't be on the streets or outside. And uh, but other than that, there's no lockdown right now. Sankatan is going on nicely, in fact. And the rules of history in books and, and Harinam is going on. Just the times have changed a bit. But other than that, it's, it's going on. Krishna's been very kind to us. I don't know, in Philippines, maybe. Can you go on book distribution in Philippines? Well, we're doing it online, marriage. Online, yeah. Yes. That's another nice way of doing it. We've done a little bit like that, but mostly on the street. Mostly we do it on the streets. Goranga, Nichananda. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Rama, Rama, Rama Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 
Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai कि हरि राम संकीर्तन की जय अनंग की जय ओ रे मनंदी ओ रिपो थैंक यू वेरी मच
Thank you, Maharaj. Haribo. Maharaj, first of all, we'd like to thank you for making time and giving this wonderful class. It is very hard, heartfelt. And we're begging for some mercy and blessing that your words may be our um, may put in our hearts and may we focus on it and be our sadhana, our sadhya in practice, in perfection. May it be um, the object of our desire, even if we feel happy or unhappy. And um, may we continue to serve others, serve the devotees and serve Guru. And we also invite everyone to open their camera so we could have a group photo together with Maharaj. <laughs> we will have a screen capture on um, our computer here. Yes. Then open your cameras. Okay, everybody, open your camera, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And also you can um, unmute. Everyone could unmute themselves to um, say their well wishes and greet Maharaj. My this is really Philippines. <laughs> photo yoga. Photo yoga. Hare Krishna. Oh, who's that? Is that? Who's on the line? Is that? Who was that? I heard just now. Now with Chandra. Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I go and have one photo, kind of three. You can look in your, cam in your camera. One, two, and three. Haribo! 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 With the girls. Any last word? Haribo! 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 Before we end, Maharaj, any last word for the devotees around the world in, in, in Zoom and Facebook? Haribo! Huh? Haribo! Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.